piece of olive is six by six by four inches so it's going to be used as a bowl blank I'm actually going to try and make a hollow form with this piece so I'm just going to find the center and then I'll just cut the corners off with the bandsaw make an approximate circle get it pretty close with the bandsaw maybe I can make some pen blanks or use the corners for something else it's a nice piece of wood it would be a shame to waste any of it really but uh, so I'm going to cut these corners off with the bandsaw and then we'll get it on the lathe using the worm screw I'll be using the easy wood chuck and this is the worm screw that comes with the easy wood chuck so you can drill a quarter inch for smaller pieces or three eighths for larger pieces so I'll be using the three eighths which requires a three eighths drill bit I'm just going to drill in a little bit for that and this will end up being the top of the vessel And that is plenty. So my recent purchase of the Laguna Revo 1836 has a inch and a quarter spindle. The chuck that I have is the Easywood chuck and it only has a one inch by eight TPI thread. So I purchased the adapter so I haven't used it yet so give you an idea of what it looks like. And it comes with the washers now not everybody likes using the washers but personally I do so it has a couple of screws there to uh, tighten down onto the spindle so that you can basically so you can do reverse sanding and such so I'll go ahead and put that on That's on, so now my my chuck can go on there. And I'll, again, I will use the the washer just so it doesn't bind. And I'll put that on there. Now there are screws that come with this chuck, so that you can lock that onto the spindle as well. So there'd be four set screws holding this whole piece together but only if you really need them. Um, you only need them for reverse, typically. And now I can go ahead and thread this into the wood. And that's, that's in there good now. So having much better speed control over this is quite exciting actually because before my minimum speed was just simply too fast especially for out of balance pieces this isn't particularly out of balance but uh, it's just nice to have that speed control and there's so much room around this if I were to reverse a bigger piece the motor wouldn't get in the way because the motor is way at the back here the first thing I'm going to do is face off this and then mark my mortise
Right, so I sanded the bottom of this down to 400 because all I'm going to do with this when I've finished it is I'm going to sand it and put oil on it. That's all I'm going to, that's all I plan to do anyway. Um, I want to bring the top of it right in and have a small opening so that I can hollow it out. I'm not sure the size yet that I'm going to go with, but the smallest possible, really. Um, I haven't done a ton of hollow forms, so uh, we'll see. I do have the Easy Wood hollowing tools. So that should get me in there quite a good way, quite a good way. So uh, we'll see, we'll see how I can do. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring this in more to a small opening at the top and then I'm going to drill the center. Um, yeah, so I'm going to drill the center, it's going to be slightly bigger than the hole that's there right now. And it'll be centered better. I'll use my Jacob's chuck with a drill bit for that. So let's get this turned down to the final shape on the outside. Okay, at this point I'm going to drill my hole in the center and find my depth and then I can start hollowing and shaping the uh, neck of the vessel and then, uh, then we can go up about starting to hollow it. Beautiful piece of wood. Absolutely stunning figure in it. And just to give the top of the vessel a little bit more shape, I'm just going to bring it in a little bit more here, just with some shear scraping, and then we can go about start hollowing it out. I've drilled it out down to the bottom depth that I want, and now we'll just finish that top section, and then we'll start hollowing it out. I will probably get it sanded before I hollow it out. I won't bore you with that process. Um, it's just a case of going through the grits. And that is my outside shape complete. I will now sand that and start hollowing it out. So just if it interests you as well, I've just sanded this to 150 grit uh, dry and now um, I've applied some oil as well. Uh, this will enable me to wet sand it and it will reduce the dust and also really show up those scratches so that I can uh, hopefully get the best finish possible with no tool marks, no sanding scratches or anything. And again, uh, sanding forward and reverse will help you get a much better finish as well. It's already looking very smooth. I'm not seeing any tool marks. There's definitely no tear out. Um, I think that's one of the benefits to olive wood is it doesn't seem to tear out. Um, I don't know why, maybe because it's oily wood. I don't, I don't know. Maybe one of you guys knows and you can tell me in the comments below but that is got some stunning figure in it I'm excited to get this thing finished so okay I'm now going down to 180 grit and I'm gonna work my way down to probably 600 so this is in reverse if it was dusty the sand the sawdust would be going backwards into a dust 
collector, which I do have, I just haven't set it up yet. The outside is finished. It will receive more oil and maybe burnishing or buffing in, I should say. So that's the outside complete. Let's get the inside hollowed out through this hole here. That's the fun part. Okay, so I'm going to be using the easy wood tools. Number one, two and three. First of all, this one, the, the number one, just to get it started. And then as I come around the corner, I can use the two and the three and then work my way down to the bottom and to the outside as close as I can without having a laser to check that. Um, I'm going to go a lot by sound. I'm going to be tapping it to get that sound so that I can tell how hollow it is, I guess. Um, it's going to be difficult to get the chips out as well. I'm going to have to use air to get the chips out. So it's going to take some time. And cutting on center, so I need to adjust my tool rest to the correct height. That's one thing in wood turning, there is a lot of adjusting to be done throughout the whole process to make sure that you're cutting at the right height. Swapping over to the number two now, I have to make sure that the tool rest is on the flat part, not over here. So I have to adjust the tool rest again. Bringing it back to a safe position so that it's not going to move around, it's going to be on the tool rest on the flat portion. my way down the center more to remove the chance of me grabbing on the other side with these tools.
Okay, so I've hollowed this out. It is fairly consistent. I have to uh, enlarge the hole a little bit because I just couldn't get my tool in and around that corner very well. But uh, it's fairly it's fairly thin, fairly thin walled. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to turn a piece for the top um, just to cap it off. I think it will look quite nice and then uh, you won't get get your finger in there either, so that's a that's a bonus. So uh, that's what I'm going to do now. I got a piece of uh, East Indian rosewood, I believe it is. I've got it chucked up in the lathe, and I'm going to turn a small tenon, small enough to fit in the hole, and then I'll turn that around, and then I'll finish the top off, and it will just be a nice little cap for the top for the hollow form, just to give it a bit of contrast. So let's get that done now. Okay, so as you can see, I've just put this piece in the chuck. It's about uh, two and a half inches square. It's fairly shallow. It's about three quarters of an inch thick. So I'm just going to turn a small tenon on this. That's the size. I've got the size already. It's going to be close anyway. And then uh, we'll get that turned around in the chuck. As some of you may know, uh, Hampshire Sheen has been going through some changes lately. One of those changes being food and toy safe finishes. And I'm happy to announce that uh, Hampshire Sheen food and toy safe gloss is now here in Canada. It isn't actually on my website yet. It just arrived this week, this past week, uh, but it will be up shortly. So I'm gonna be using this for the first time on this piece right here. This is... Uh, the first time that English Hampshire Sheen gloss has arrived in Canada and here it is. So we're going to put this on this vessel now. This was the first project I did on the new Laguna 1836 Revo and I absolutely love it. It's a brilliant piece of kit, so I highly recommend it. I can't say enough about it. Um, I haven't done 
a review on it, but uh, it's everything that I hoped it would be. Thank you guys for watching. That was a lot of fun to make. Absolutely love this piece of wood. It's fantastic. Um, Ismail in Tunisia, thank you for this wood. Absolutely love it. And I will be ordering more soon for the Canadian market. Um, if you haven't turned olive wood, I highly recommend it. It's absolutely beautiful. It has a beautiful finish to it and it smells amazing when you're turning it. I really like it anyway. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you again for the next wood turning video. I'll leave a few photographs at the end and a link to my website where I will soon have more of these blanks available for sale. Take care now. Bye. <music>